Yes, it's me, Mina. It's me, Chris. This. Hiyo. Oh, hiyo. Konnichiwa. Konbanwa. Mina. Kiwi Dad. Welcome to Rambling Tea Time Dad. Rambling Tea Time Dad. <laughs> Yoroshiku ne. Hi, hi. Sore de? Eh, to. Why are we speaking Japanese? I have no idea. Mm hmm. Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Rambling Tea Time. How are you guys doing? Hello, hello everyone. How are you? Yes, we are going to get right into it. Today's episode is about something that we both wanted to watch for a bit, came out a while ago. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Yes. I like this movie. I'm just going to say it right off the bat. This was quite enjoyable. Yeah, it was good. It was. I don't know. It was just, it just hit me. It was, it just, it had a lot to say. It said it, but at the same time, it was very fun. Uh huh. It hit you? Where did it hit you? Right in the kokoro, as they would say. <laughs> in the heart, you know? This is the second time you've said that. Yeah. Okay. It caught me feeling things. And uh -huh. things don't normally get me to feel like this kid. But yeah, it was good. I liked the whole parallel university thing that they were doing. Multiverse. Multiverse thing that they were doing with the main character. I, I like this movie. This, it was a wonderful movie. Out of all the stuff that I've seen this year, I would say that this is probably my favorite movie so far. Really? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yes. Oh. It, it was that enjoyable to me. I mean, I think it was good, but you're saying like, out of everything that you've seen yes. this year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everything that I've seen this year. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the whole... I don't know if you guys have seen it. There will be spoilers, as usual. It's come out already yes. now. It's been you a know, while, you, so... You don't want to have people get mad. But anyways, We always have spoilers, true, so... True, true, But how do we even start this one? Okay, so... Everything Everywhere All at Once is about a older lady, um, older Asian lady. I guess she's supposed to be in her 50s, 60s. Mm, um, she runs a laundromat with her family. They are getting audited at the IRS. Yes. And then she meets her other parallel husband from another universe who tells her that she needs to save the world. Yeah, basically. I like how you and the main character are instantly just immediately thrown for a loop. Like, everything starts and you see the interaction with her family at home, you see the whole the husband is thinking about divorce, you mm -hmm. see how her and daughter don't get along 100%. And there's the father's birthday and all this stuff. And you see that. You see how busy and stressed. You can right. see how stressed she is. And then they just show that one scene. Um, where they switch to the ca uh, the CCT camera stuff. And the husband is moving right. and jumping, jumping about the place. And it's just like. And and it's like oh, what? And yeah. yeah. It just throws you for a loop. And then it continues until you get to the IRS. And then he switches again yeah yeah and you see that there is a, a different personality there uh who we come to known as um what's his name again now he called himself alpha alpha wayman yes alpha wayman and he needs our main character to save the world right and she's just is this just my husband being my husband or is something going on strange here because he seems like he's a quirky guy on all sorts of stuff and so she gives him a note right <laughs> and don't, what are even one of those things that he gave gave her they look like bluetooth headphones yeah there's just, some kind of yeah, yeah. and it's like just do this stuff and then they have a conversation but anyways she gets the headphones she does the instructions and she teleports back into the she doesn't teleport. No, her conscience? She accesses right. one of her other universe selves, selves in yes. another universe. Yes. Um, what was that self doing? 
they were she was inside the the janitor's, janitor's closet. closet right yeah so they were just borrowing that time space so that they could have the conversation to explain to her to save the world right this movie was strange anyhow <laughs> so she was killed yes that, that version. version yeah and then the movie just goes on a spiral from there right we don't have to talk about everything no because it's too much i think i really enjoyed the concept of to tap into one of your parallel universes abilities or what they can do you have to do some weird action yeah <laughs> i yeah i like that as well they call them conditions that needed to be fulfilled yes yeah so that you would sync up i guess to be able to do the thing that a person which is fair i like having that you have to do something and right, add, right. add some weird you add to the comedy and the quirkiness of the film as well yeah so, the conditions were all weird. a lot of them were strange <laughs> um the strangest and probably the most painful i feel would be the guys who had to uh, yeah. um <laughs> they had to put the something oh, anything their in their butt i yeah. guess um, i like how yeah. serious they were about it yeah they're real go-getters to, <laughs> to get <laughs> yeah one that was really it was gross but it was Simple mm. was women eating gum off of the, uh, of yeah, the side yeah. of the table, things like that. It was just gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. Um, another was that remember this was another gross one mm. when her father or Alpha, her father, she took the snot from his nose and put it in his mouth. <laughs> that was one as well. <laughs> I, yeah. That was that was a good. I like the whole that whole um, instead of just getting them for free or whatever. It's right, like, right. See, if we were going to believe it anyway, they needed it to. Is exactly having some kind of trade off or something like a, a small payment. Yeah, yeah, An yeah. Equivalent yeah. exchange. You right, can say. right, right. Although it was probably not exactly <laughs> equivalent, but. Paying some kind of price for being able to access other use um, abilities. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I like it. It's like, you know, unlocking a gate mm -hmm. or paying the tally at the gate and being able to open it yes. or go inside. Yeah, I like that idea. Right fare. And each fare is completely different for right, whatever right. universe that you're accessing. Uh, I... I quite like that it, the whole the movie all ties into dealing with like family because the main bad guy turns out to be like a, a multiversal version of her daughter. Yes. Whose consciousness was split among different various versions of herself. Right. So her whole thing is that she can, she as constantly accessing everybody. Right. And the reason she was able to do that was because parallel her mother Alpha her Alpha mother. her mother in the <laughs> Alpha verse universe she kind of forced her because when she saw that she was able to you know access the different um, mm -hmm. universe hers she kind of forced her to continue doing it and it became too, too strong much. for her and and then she was just able to be everywhere. everywhere. At Every time. Uh, exactly, all exactly, else. exactly. <laughs> all of the hers in the universe, she was able to... Access. Exactly. And that became overwhelming for her, and that's how her mind split and everything. And that's why she wanted to make the bagel. Exactly. So that she can create... She, so she can pretty much commit multiversal suicide. suicide. Yeah. At first, you don't think that's what it was, though. I think in the first of the movie, mm -hmm. in the beginning, the first part, it seems like if... Because, you know, we're told that it'll save the world. Yes. The bagel is something that is going to destroy all of us. Mm -hmm. Right? But it turns out later on that that's not even what it is. Mm -hmm. It's only for Joy or Joe Butapaki <laughs> um, to kill off themselves so that they will not have to exist yeah, yeah. any longer 
So eventually, the main character, Evelyn, she decides that the only way that she can beat her is if she becomes like her. Right. And she splits her conscience across all versions of herself as well. And then she also realizes that the same truth that uh, Joy, Joby Tabaki, that's such a good name to say, realizes is that it's all meaningless. Well... To her, it's all meaningless. Right, because she's done everything. She's been everywhere, experienced everything. Mm -hmm. She came to the realization that everything means nothing. And eventually, even Evelyn is probably thinking that maybe the best choice is to jump into the bagel as well. Yeah. And Waymon pretty much brings them back. Brings her back. You know? Because he has, he is talking, he's just trying to prevent all of this stuff from going down. And he just doesn't, he doesn't want Evelyn to hurt herself. Right. Even though he himself was like, we are not working. And he has like divorce papers because it's like, like things are just stressed between two of them. And it's, it's, it seems that it hasn't been working out. Mm-hmm. He still cares. He wasn't, I think he explained though that he wasn't. He didn't want them to get a divorce exactly, but he wanted them to at least talk yes. about their problems yes. that they were going through. Mm. Yeah. I And that's pretty much the core of the movie, isn't it? Like, actually stop and just talk to one another. Is it? Yeah, because when they go to that one universe where they become rocks, I think that was, like, this sat down. They actually talked yeah. about how... You know, this is it's just good to be a rock. You don't have to do anything. And they're just thinking and just being, like, free from most of it. It's just... And sometimes you want to just be free from everything. Mm-hmm. You know? And I really like how they were just there sitting. And eventually, she's like, you just need to let me go. You just need to let me not be anymore. Yeah. Just let me disappear. You know? But... I resonate. <laughs> but she pulls her back. She decides, I'll I'll go with you. I'll see with you. I'll try to... It doesn't have... That's because everything is, is nothing. It doesn't mean that you can't still enjoy and just experience being exactly and that was that's what i think the point was later on um at the end do you remember we spoke about this in our existential dread episode Mm -hmm. about the um the guy two guys sitting on the bus one looks outside and sees you know everything is meaningless um and he's all doom and gloom yeah but the other guy on the same bus looks outside the window and he's like everything means nothing everything is meaningless but he's happy about that because he's thinking about all of the possibilities yes that could you know so i think that same thing everything about that was happening here in the movie. Mm-hmm. So Joy Jobutupaki, mm-hmm. having experienced all of these possibilities, thought that you know nothing means anything, and that that was a bad thing for her. Yeah, because she had all of this, um, all these experiences and all this life that she had lived, she felt like it didn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. But then. When they, you know, after they have their talk and everything, um, Evelyn says to her, but in a positive way, that what does it matter? Because everything means nothing. But but more as like a reassuring mm-hmm. statement. Yeah. Instead. Mm. Mm-hmm. It can be... I, I kind of also like the whole thing with the daughter and being gay and the whole thing with the father and how even though how how the father treated Evelyn when she was when she was growing up and she left mm-hmm. the thing and then how Evelyn herself is also being with the daughter and just like how the strain between a generation just one generation is can be a lot mm-hmm. and that sometimes you you just can't connect back 
to like family yeah. just like one generation that you might love them and you might care for them but it's like just sitting down and talking or just being with the person is too hard to even like like get over that yeah, type of yeah, thing yeah. i really like that whole like angle as well because the daughter joy herself is like she feels also like inadequate i, yeah. I guess that you know she just and I can I can understand that I kind of connected with her on that level because I can understand feeling like just inadequate mm -hmm. when it comes to like comparing yourself to like maybe your your family, especially your family or to your parents yeah. or to like somebody who comes before you, and you just feel like maybe we just don't understand. So it's fine, you know, to just not see one another or don't don't care what the other thing. But I still like that the whole movie was like still family can still somehow care be there for one another mm -hmm. you know you but talk seriously just get it out sometimes it's better to just get things out to one another and then move on yeah i agree i think that it showed us that you know like you said with sometimes when there is a generational gap and you feel like you can't connect maybe you have different values of generations different beliefs and stuff mm -hmm. but you d you shouldn't repress any feelings and but you shouldn't be cruel either yeah so i think that because evelyn had the issues with her father she kind of was doing the same things to her daughter mm. in terms of, I'm not going to say it's emotional abuse, although I feel like all parents kind of perpetuate <laughs> emotional <laughs> abuse on their kids. But she, she, she didn't know how to express herself either yes. to her daughter because, because she, she never, exactly, stunted. exactly. So, and she grew, she grew um, in the movie to come to a, a place where she could not necessarily connect, although they did connect, but just to be able to actually say, you know, to have a conversation, like you mm -hmm. said, with her daughter about, you know, the stuff that she went through and even with her father yes. to say that you know, the stuff that you, the way that you were to me, I don't want to be that way to my daughter, but I ended up being like that and she ended up being like me and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. This is all about trying to not repeat the same mistakes. Right, right. That we have made. And when we acknowledge that we have made mistakes to like, you know, apologize, try to do right by the person. Exactly. Sometimes you might be too late. And that is unfortunate, and that's the case for a lot of people. But at least in this sense, you still have chance, you know? Yeah, I think that sometimes it could be too late. Maybe someone passed on. Mm. But if, I feel like if the person hasn't passed on or they're not in a state where y'all can't communicate or something, then there's always a chance. Yeah. There's always a chance to reconnect or to connect <laughs> yeah. or to try again yeah usually i feel like i'm a donor but in certain cases people can be so down after failing just once mm. you know just if there's a person in your life a family member or friend whatever and you feel like your relationship is strained and you couldn't, you know, get it out there. Just just keep trying. Mm. Just keep trying. That's all I can really say, <laughs> you know, because it can be hard sometimes to say what you want to say to someone. Yes, indeed. Sometimes you do it and it comes off maybe too blunt too cruel but then other times maybe you don't say anything you you like be cryptic so you, you can't really <laughs> not hitting the figure issue. out what it is that you're saying anyway beating around the bush too much type of way you know? yeah 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 it's you have to find the the right ground or whatever but you keep trying you should keep trying to build that bond or whatever it is and yeah i think that was, I think that the message of the movie was good. That was a 
pretty a, a pretty enjoyable with all the theatrics and stuff going on in the movie and what it's actually about and all the fighting and stuff. Yeah. It it is just the core of it is just talk to your family. Is that the core? Though? Well, just that it does. I think this way my takeaway is like talk so that you don't kill you don't kill yourself uh. i guess you know or just it isn't sometimes hopefully people can just reconnect no matter what it would have taken the two of them the multiverse almost dying to the bagel and the destruction of the multiverse as well but they somehow still connected it took too much for them, honestly. <laughs> they should have all just gone to therapy. Uh, <laughs> I like how this is not the first time you've said it after we've talked to a lot of shore. I think it's like they should have just gone to therapy. Yeah, you know, why are people <laughs> so against getting, you know, medical, psychological help? Because we put all that stuff in the bat bone, bat line. We just. It isn't the forefront of... We, we're so busy. We have things to do. We have family to take That's care of. That's the point as well, and right? We of the movie. ourselves Because everything last. is happening, we have these emotions. <laughs> That's what, exactly what you're saying, though. We put our emotions a lot of the time mm-hmm. on the back burner. And the only kind of emotions that come out usually are the negative ones. Yes. Our anger, our jealousy, our envy. Just, why is it that it's usually like that? It's easier to be negative than positive. Okay, well, if that's the case, we all need therapy. We all need therapy. Honestly. At some point in time. Yeah. I mean, we go to a doctor to get checkup. And then again, going to your doctor is expensive as ass. So I guess that's, what mo- that's, that's the truth, you know. A lot of people say that the reason why they don't go for health, mental or otherwise, is because it's too expensive. So you spend all your life just, you know, trying okay, to so... work, but you never really. I think that I think, but I think going forward, people are getting more like, yes, we need to take care of our mental health as much as you want to say yes, you I take think care it's of your becoming body. More accessible, easily, more easily accessible to people as well. Mm. But you can also, like how we did, we did a mental health checkup. Do you remember Ah, You can do those as well Mm. with someone that, you know, maybe someone that you trust to hold what you say close. If I I guess if you want to keep that a secret. You don't even have to do it with someone. Mm. You can answer those questions yourself as well. It's Uh. not even a group. Thing yeah. it doesn't need to be done with a partner or with a group. Mm-hmm. It's something that you do on your own. I see. I've been seeing a lot of the different like things to apps and whatnot. I'm not sure if all of them are any good, but I've been seeing stuff like that being like, "Hey, if you need help, do this, get this, do this app, have all these therapists that could connect to you, and all that type of stuff." So, like, I like that the accessibility for stuff like that is getting more common. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, Joy had severe depression. Yes, she did. Overall, I I really enjoyed this movie. I I think I'll watch it again. Is that so? Yeah, I'll give it a rewatch. But yeah, I think this it was enjoyable. Just I think. The juxtaposition of all the craziness plus what it is actually trying to say mm-hmm. blend and how they blended it together really well and they told the story pretty good. I like that it wasn't all serious. It's a comedy. Yeah, I, I like love that. the weird, still, silly yeah. stuff about it. All the different ways Joby Tabaki was doing with her abilities, turning people into like thing was half comedy. It reminded me of like those old comedy kung fu movies, you know. Mm-hmm. And it had that whole learning how to fight and then the whole pinky thing that she was doing. Yeah. <laughs> and the fucking um, raccoon. Raccoon. Oh, <laughs> That's probably an honest mistake that someone made. And they turned it into a joke. Yeah, yeah. Ah, I, yes. I think this gets my thumbs up for me. Like, many, many thumbs up. If I had more than two thumbs, I would give it, like, 
oh, all of them. I feel like that's excessive, but um, I just really enjoyed it. Out of like stuff that I've seen and other weird stuff type of superpower type stuff mm-hmm. right recently, this was tame in comparison to that other stuff. But I got more out of it. Yeah, I got more enjoyment. I liked the characters. I liked what the story was saying to say. I just enjoyed the overall strangeness of it all, with mm-hmm, the abilities mm-hmm. and stuff. It was just fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it as well. I'd give it a seven eight. A seven eight? I would give this a nine, Kimberly. What are you ah, even talking about? Ah, okay. Seven eight? What? You disgust me. You wouldn't be the first. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all we have to say for this movie. Uh, you know, short little review here from Remnant Tea Time about everything, everywhere, all at once. I don't think that was a good review, but if that's all we have to say, I mean, what else do you want to say? I don't want to spoil everything. This one movie, I actually want people to go and watch, or if they have watched it, they can tell us what they like most. But yeah, go and watch this movie. I agree. It's a good watch. You won't be... I don't think you'll be upset um, after watching it thinking this is trash or anything. (laughs) Um, It's quite good. It's quite good. Um, I like the different... Do you you remember the moment where they were flipping through all of the the Uh, universes? Ah, yes. That was a good scene. I like that. And they used actual footage of her on the runway, or not runway, but on the red carpet of different events. Mm-hmm. I caught that. You caught that? Yeah, I caught it. In for the universe where she was um, a famous actress. I mean, she is. So they used the footage. And they used the whole meta of the movie itself being a movie within the world yeah. of that one world. Very strange. Very fun. Apparently, it was made for Jackie Chan. This, this movie? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He was supposed to be the main character, I guess. Ah. But then they changed it for a female. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that working, because that th- this whole action comedy type stuff is his bread and butter from the get-go. Mm-hmm. So I could see him being in that role. But yeah, go watch the movie. See you guys next one. See you guys in the next one. Night, everyone.